From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Thanks for listening. Good evening. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This afternoon, I want to talk a few minutes about Dupetrin contracture. Dupetrin contracture is a relatively common disorder. It is characterized by hyperplasia of the plantar fascia and related structures. And it forms nodules after that uh, contractures. Basically, there will be contractions of the plantar fascia. And it, is, uh, it has genetic predisposition and also primarily occurs in white men over 50 years of age. So that's the typical patient, white men over 50 years of age. The incidence is higher among alcoholic patients and those patients with chronic systemic disorders, like especially like cirrhosis. It is also associated with uh, systemic fibrosing uh, syndrome, like uh, peroni disease, and also mediastinal and uh, retroperitoneal fibroids and uh, radial stroma. Those are the associated conditions. The onset may be acute, but slowly progressive chronic disease is more common. Dupetrin contracture, it manifests like uh, a nodular or cord-like thickening of one or both hands. So you will see a cord-like fibrosing I mean the fifth and the little finger, the little finger, uh, uh, the ring finger, these two fingers, they develop those contractures. And the inability to satisfactorily extend the fingers, they can't extend the fingers like this. And the areas become tender sometimes. And because of those contractures, it becomes a cosmetic problem. So dopatin contractures can cause uh, difficulties with the func functionality and then the cosmetic problems. Let's review the most important points. It's basically characterized by a nodular thickening on the plantar surface of the hand, so the palmar surface of the hand and the fascia. And it is a progressive condition resulting from pathologic changes mediated by the myofibroblast occurs most commonly in patients between 40 and 60 years of age. It is observed most often in men in whom it appears early and uh, if it comes early it becomes more aggressive. And uh, metacarpophalangeal joints, these joints, they get these contractures. And the more severe, the more contracture you will see. The little and the ring fingers and the thumb index are the most commonly involved areas, okay? The little, the ring fingers, and the thumb index web are the most commonly involved areas. And you will see the ectopic webs on the dorsum of the proximal interphalangeal joints, this is called knuckle pads. And also dorsum of the penis in the perineus disease or the plantar fascia of the foot in ladder holes disease. So these ectopic deposits may occur it can occur on the dorsum of the uh, proximal interphalangeal joints when we call knuckle pads, dorsum of the penis, peroneal disease, and also the plantar fascia of the foot, and we call it ladder horse disease. Epidemiological factors, dipertinence contracture is associated with epilepsy medications, and uh, many epilepsy medications can cause dipertinence contracture. Patients with alcoholism can develop this. Patients who smoke can develop this. Patients with diabetes can develop dopatrin's contracture. So those are the associated conditions. Patients with uh, seizure medications, diabetes, alcoholism, and smoking. So those are the associated risk factors for this uh, condition. Now, the most aggressive disease occurs in patients with a family history of this disease. So if there is a family history, it could be very aggressive. And also in patients who develop this problem before 40 years of age. 
Under patent contracture, it disturbs the anatomy of the plantar fascia, folks. And as a result, the flexion contractures of the metacarpophalangeal joints are caused. So, the flexion contractures happen like this. The pathological contractions, and uh, there will be pretendinous bands at superficial level. Now, a few words about treatment. Treatment, non-surgical treatments, ointments, tablets, they don't work well. I mean, people market them, and the patients use them, but they are useless. The definitive treatment is surgery. You got to be uh, seen by a surgeon who will fix it. That contracture, I mean, this contracture has to be reduced by surgery and back to the normal. And that helps a lot. And that cures the, depending on the efficacy, I mean, it cures the cosmetic problem and it could restore some functionality to the hand. And the metacarpal pharyngeal joints are also uh, effective. And the recurrence can happen. Particularly when the extent of uh, uh, preoperative proximal pharyngeal joint contracture. So if the contracture is so severe, recurrence may happen back. And the long-term post-operative uh, splinting. So another thing is uh, splinting. You can try to splint the fingers, the splint the thumb. So the surgery, splinting, and also some people are trying injections nowadays. They are also effective to some extent. That's about the pattern contraction. And uh, please visit me for more videos at www.drpaul.org. That's www.drpaul.org. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.